All right, Wednesday, August 21st, the League of Women Voters of Needham and Dover Sherbourne hosted a candidates forum for the Democratic primary candidates running for the third Norfolk District State Representative. The forum featured two of the three candidates on the ballot, Patrick Gatto and Joshua Tarski, along with write-in candidate Buren Patel. Candidate Kenneth Rutnick was unable to participate due to an unexpected conflict. During the forum, the candidates shared their perspectives on various issues, including housing, climate change, the economy, and transparency, occasionally sparking disagreements. Let's take a look at the highlights. When asked about their views on the current economy, Gallo and Patel had opposing opinions. We have, you know, a very strong economy. We have a robust business sector. We have more people coming than leaving, you know. That being said, we have more people leaving than historically, but we're still a net positive. You know, we can do tax incentives. We have to, you know, make sure we strike the balance between incentivizing business and also, you know, making, making, making sure that people can afford to live here, right? So there's a balance, attracting talent, but there's financial mechanisms in the budget that we can tweak and work with. We've actually lost, in a study that was just done about a month ago, close to, on average, $3 billion a year in folks leaving our state between the ages of 25 and 40. How are we going to make up for that revenue? Right? That's question number one. Two, more importantly, what do we have to do to keep these folks to set their roots here in Massachusetts? They come here to take advantage of our educational systems. We want to keep this talent. While Tusky did not explicitly comment on the current economy, he emphasized the importance of the Affordable Homes Act, which was recently signed into law by Governor Maura Healey. If the housing bills work out the way we want, if housing actually becomes more affordable, that puts more money in people's pockets. So I think that's part of the goal of all the the efforts to make housing more affordable. I also think if we embrace some of the green initiatives, there's jobs in there, right? So if we push that, we could, you know, get people working in fields that benefit the climate and at the same time um, are high paying. Questions about improving transparency and productivity on Beacon Hill arose a couple of times. Patel strongly criticized some legislators for using their leadership positions to earmark appropriations for their own districts and for chairing committees that had not considered any bills. Both issues were reported by the Boston Globe in the spring. Just a quick example, in the last budget they cut out $3.5 million from substance abuse to give $1.5 million to a district that was represented by a senior member of the legislation for a wedding venue re, uh, remodel. How does this make sense? Oh, they give people um, committee uh, positions to make more money without anything that the committee might be doing. We need to have answers from the legislation on transparency, and I will work with the state auditor to make sure what we can do to get the transparency at the state house. Tusky expressed his willingness to undergo inspections. I would welcome the auditor looking into the stuff that I'm doing, you know, I, once again, as a, a public school principal, I am always being looked at, my decisions, I have to explain, I'd be happy to continue that process if I was put on Beacon Hill. But I do think it's a sad state of affairs that we have to have this oversight of, of elected officials. It just shouldn't look like that. Gatto noted changing the culture on Beacon Hill takes time and cautioned against rushing into action, a point that was later challenged by Patel. You want to be able to go up there and bring home bacon, right, and do a good job and have a good relationship with leadership. If you go up there and fighting that issue, you're going to get relegated to a basement. You know, I've seen it happen before. You're not going to be able to talk to leadership about anything. So there's a more strategic way to do it. I have a master's degree in conflict resolution. I use those interpersonal skills every day in my business, with my kids, and everywhere else. Um, it's the next generation of leadership that we need to start working on now to make sure that we can have changes that we all agree on. Speaking to a lot of legislators around the state, a lot of them asked me why I wanted to run, because they're frustrated with the business as usual at the state house, the bullying that happens at the state house because you don't automatically say have a say against the speaker needs to stop. 
we need to make that change. We need to have this transparency, and we can't be relegated to the basement. But I mean, I think we're all agree that the system is not working well. I think what I'm bringing from my experience and in these rooms and working with these people is that there's a way to do it that doesn't relegate us to the basement and probably gets us there quicker. The candidates were also asked to provide yes or no answers to specific policy questions. Gatto and Tusky both support Medicare for all. Patel and Gatto agree MCAS should no longer be a graduation requirement. Meanwhile, Patel favors regulated access to psychedelic substances. Gatto expressed opposition, and Tusky remained undecided. You can watch the full forum on NeedhamChannel.org. For Needham Channel News, I'm Yu Xiaoyuan.